We're going to discuss two settings that can have a big influence on the quality of our waveforms in oscilloscope work, especially as it relates to automotive. First, we're going to talk about the interpolation setting. And in oscilloscope work, there are three common choices, step, linear, and sync. Sync is also sometimes referred to as sine C or sine X over X. Uh, here, we're just going to say sync. And let's start with that one first. Interpolation is uh, really just how we're connecting the dots. If you look at this sine wave, you will uh, notice that uh, the lines that connect each dot that form the waveform um, follow a contour. And that contour is kind of based on the previous shape of the contour before it. Um, that's what sync does. And then the end result is a waveform that more closely reflects um, the true sine wave in this example. Let's have a look at the effect of choosing linear interpolation instead. Here, you can see that there is no consideration given, no mathematical uh, formulas applied to connecting the dots. It just takes the most direct straight line route and ends up with a bit of a choppy um, waveform, right? It is not really true to the sign. Let's have a quick look at our third uh, option, which is step interpolation. The result is a staircase um, connection of the waveform dots. For most uses, the sync interpolation is going to be our choice. It's going to give us the best uh, quality waveform, providing that we also choose the proper sample rate with it, which gives us a segue into the second topic of this video. So we're looking at a 100 hertz sine wave here, and we're capturing it at a one kilo sample per second sample rate. So what it means is that we have a thousand sample points in a second, and with this 100 hertz uh, sine wave, uh, one period from crest to crest, there are 10 sample points contained within it. That's a rule of thumb. 10 sample points in a period is considered the minimum uh, to uh, properly capture a waveform. There's such a thing as choosing too low of a sample rate and you're going to get this kind of weird effect. There are not enough sample points in the period of the waveform. In automotive work in particular, I don't think that's where we tend to err we tend to err on choosing too high of a sample rate, and we're going to focus our discussion on that. So what's the big deal if we uh, go a little bit overboard with a sample rate? Well, at the very least, it's an inefficient use of the buffer. So we only have so many sample points uh, that are allowed to us. And if we oversample, uh, we're just not going to get that much of a duration in our capture. At worst, if we really go overboard, and here's an example, now we're really uh, short on our time frame, and you would think that more sample points would be good, right? That we would get a better defined uh, waveform. Actually, it's too much of a good thing. So let's um, just zoom in a little bit on this and have a look. You see how all of these sample points have just piled on uh, to the detriment of the quality of the waveform instead of a nice, thin, smooth line for our waveform. And because of the low frequency nature of automotive work, it is especially easy to oversample in that field. Case in point, you guys will recognize these cheap in-cylinder pressure uh, transducers. And this waveform that resembles an in-cylinder pressure waveform. 
Notice how it's a fairly a thin and a clean uh, wave. It's been captured at two kilo samples per second. And if I bring in the sample points in there, you'll notice that the detail of the towers contain roughly that minimum requirement of 10 sample points to fully define it. Yet we're not overdoing it, right? So here's the same waveform, but it's captured at 10 kilo samples per second, five times more sample points than before. Notice those jagged edges on the towers, uh, something that we've been struggling with with these cheap uh, Chinese sensors. Let's introduce the sample points into the picture. And let's zoom in to one of these towers. And now you can see the bunching up of these sample points. It's just too much of a good thing. We're fortunate that H-Scope gives us this control on the sample rate and that we're able to choose two kilo samples per second and get the smoother profile of the towers with that cheap uh, in-cylinder pressure transducer. Let's take a look at what software uh, oscilloscope software tends to do. So here we have the very same 7 Hz waveform and we're capturing it using the Loto Windows software. And it um, runs pretty much the way many uh, oscilloscope uh, software does in that it gives us the option to choose the time per division which we've chosen 50 millisecond per division. But notice at the top of the screen here, right here, it says that we're um, sampling at 2.4 mega sample per second. There was no choice given to us uh, for this. It, uh, software selected it based on the time per division that we chose. And the resulting waveform, if you look, is that jagged edge um, is shown on the towers here and uh, there's not much um, uh, options given to us to uh, slow down the sample rate to eliminate that. That's something that uh, H-Scope, you know, you have the mobility and many other uh, attributes to that uh, app that I uh, often speak of here on the channel, but being able to um, select sample rates ranks right up there with me. So interpolation and the ability to choose sample rates in low frequency automotive work is very important. The Loto OSC-42 was used throughout this video. It is one of the many budget oscilloscopes supported by the 8Scope app, which is readily found on the Google Play Store. Talk to you guys soon.